good to see you again, my friend. Uh, last time I saw you was on uh, Cruise to the Edge, which uh, was fun for everybody. Um, the one show that you had on there that everybody was talking about was the was the one on the pool stage, which was like in hurricane force winds. You, you remember that that show? It's very hard to not remember the show. Mm, but yeah, that was a very nice experience. Probably the most windy experience in my whole entire life. Yeah, it was a it and, was uh, really fun. And I had this feeling that when we when we play the second show in the theater, I I found it that some people were kind of feel kind of, felt kind of boring, you know, because there was no wind, there was no <laughs> such an attraction like we had on the pool. So right, right, right. Just just music. That's it. But yeah, it was really fun. No, no, it was still a great show too. But that 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 one on the pool was certainly just it was because you hadn't normally experienced something like that. I mean, there's pool there's shows on that pool stage all the time, but it just so happened while well, you guys were playing, it got it got crazy. I mean, it was it was pretty. It was funny. crazy, and I remember when uh, I, I saw the show of uh, Randy McStein and Marco Minimum uh, after our show, and I was checking if they're struggling or no. And I was checking, yeah, they're struggling. Okay, so it's not that we had the, the worst part, no. Yeah. So we are in one big community, one big family struggling together. So that was good. Yeah. And then, <laughs> uh, of course, it's a while from now, but you're going to be back on the cruise uh, in 2024. So that's cool. Good to have you guys back we, again. It seems like you we guys have are plans good. for that. Yeah. Yes, that, maybe that's a good moment to say that uh, we ask to not... Uh, announce this before we announce our American tour, US tour and Canada tour. And uh, someone just put it for uh, two seconds and it, it's gone. But, but yeah, we're coming, we're coming definitely. Yeah. Well, I want to get to the, to the tour, but let's uh, talk about the album uh, ID Entity, uh, January 20th. Um, it's, you know, what's cool about that title is it's, it's very Riverside and uh, it seems like something that w is a cool way to write that word and use that as an album title. And when did that light bulb moment have happen for you that 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 could be a, a title and a concept for the record? Because it seems so perfectly matched for what you guys are about. Well, <clears throat> actually, it started in lockdown. Um, I just realized that uh, that's a good moment for many people to make a stop and think about our lives um, and everything connected with our human being on this planet. And then I realized that, yeah, we have identity crisis, definitely. And it would be a very nice um, idea to talk about it, maybe on the next album, I don't know, Riverside or Lunatic Soul. I didn't know that yet. But then I realized that identity, um, of course, it has eight letters. And Riverside, I will uh, record eighth album. So that will be for Riverside, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, when I started to think about it, uh, about our band identity, I just realized that I can go much further with this subject. And uh, yeah, and, and write the lyrics that matters, that, uh, talk about our issues our problems that we struggle with these days and when we uh did this artwork with uh Jarek kubitsky because uh Jarek kubitsky is the oh, is the main guy behind the artwork this time for the first time without travis smith on board but i believe that Jarek did this also very beautiful when we when i talked to when when we discuss the main cover and the title, I just realized that maybe we should mark this ID in the title uh, because we can also mark the ID in the Riverside title. I mean, the Riverside name. Right. And then I realized that I can also use the dot Then I will can separate ID, entity, ID, entity. There's lots of meanings there. So right, I yeah. thought, yeah. That would be very Riverside-ish. So <laughs> it was probably at the end, you know, of this uh, artwork, 
process, but I'm, I'm happy because it's not boring and it's, it will be easier to Google this. So <laughs> you know, right. if you want to search for the album. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you guys always approach uh, albums with with a certain concept. Um, obviously, Wasteland had a had a heavy feel about it uh, for obvious reasons. Um, what do you need that concept to to approach a record to to write? Or are you demoing without that generally, just sort of ideas, or 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 do you need a focus of what this is going to be about? I believe that with Riverside from the very beginning, that was something when I, when I started to think about any album, um, probably out of myself was only like um, a bunch of tracks that we decided to combine together and maybe later put some title behind it. I, I, I knew that I should start with something bigger uh, but uh, since Second Life Syndrome, I had the concept already at the beginning. And I knew what kind of music that should be and what color of the cover, what color of music. And, uh, and that's always the beginning of, of our working on, on Riverside albums. Like there's a concept, there's the title, there is the idea behind. And then we're just filling the gaps. You know? So it's nothing like the brainstorm, let's collect 25, I mean, let's compose 25 songs and later just pick 12, the best ones. No, no, it's, it's always like the concept. And uh, I have the, I know already that it should be somewhere at the beginning, that should be in the middle, that should be at the end. And I'm just filling these gaps in that way. Always on the last moment you know with the with the final piece always like three days before the final deadline <laughs> i don't know why i simply yeah. can't work in different way probably when uh when did you start actually recording uh and and or working on the record was it was it after the cruise or were you already starting by then after yeah i had this you know time schedule like from june this to august 20 so it was like two months and uh two weeks to is finish that everything to write to write or does it turn that was long? fast for me yeah. you know that was and i said to guys okay we can make it but i need to produce this album this time because i have the vision so i will do this very quickly but i need to be focused and uh and i didn't have lyrics yet that was fun I knew I knew that will be the concept about identity, but I didn't know how to how to put it, how to write it. Should I write it in a more poetry way, or should I be more direct? And I chose the second option. <laughs> and um, yeah, but two and a half months, you know. But uh, <clears throat> it should it's supposed to be the album also about uh, Riverside's identity, and uh, we sort of work that way, you know. We are maybe not in a hurry all the time, but we are in motion, you know? And uh, what's the most important thing about Riverside is, I mean, when I, when I realized what's the most Riverside-ish identity, I can say that, I, I just realized that we, we shine when we express our music during our live shows. And um, we never, um, we never underline the fact that we uh, are very into releasing live albums because <laughs> these are very rare. Yeah, so we should actually. we should release al live albums like I don't know Rush did in, 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 in the, at the end of their activity. You know, all the time another another Rush show. So if I say that we shine the most when we play live shows, why not? Why can't we release lots of live albums, right? But I don't know why. I'm probably not a huge fan of that. I always prefer to to play live, not flow from, I don't know, Blu-ray disc or uh, 4K something, only just like it's supposed to be. Uh, but then I realized that maybe, maybe that's the moment because this is the beginning of our third decade to create the album that sounds a bit like our live show, or at least it reflects our 
um, energy that we have during live shows. And that was the, the, the probably most important influential point that I just written, just just wrote down in my notebook without notes and stuff. So then I realized that two and a half months for releasing the live album, that should be fine, you know, yeah. live, of course, this way. And uh, yeah, we missed maybe one week, one week, one more week, and we, we could do more things more precise but uh, at the same time i just realized that this is what 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 we should record and i'm happy for the final result are you a, a very nitpicky perfectionist in the studio uh redoing every single no type of thing or, or are you able to let go i try but this time i let go you know i just said okay let's make it for 80 <laughs> percent not 100. <laughs> right. it's just like let's leave this 20 percent for some spontaneous things that you are really enjoying during the you know live performances not everything's not so perfect you know? yeah yeah because of this these these 20 percent let's say so i i, I said okay uh, it, this is not uh uh i don't know a year and a half uh, preparing the dark side of the moon. Now let's do this in a two and a half months and show itself. It's interesting. I mean, listening to the record, it sounds a bit uh, uh, like it has that kind of energy. I think it comes across. At least that's what I, f I feel listening to it. I mean, a song like uh, the, the recent single, Self Aware, has just the best riff that's like you know it's just like a rock show kind of guitar riff in the beginning or or on bass rather if you you know if you played on bass but, <laughs> but it 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 has that kind of energy and vibe about it and it's just such a great song and there's a there's a lot of that ar ar around the record so i think maybe it came across i mean either either on intentional or by accident but it it gives that feel to it oh yeah uh, that was one more thing next to these uh, live approaches. Um, we also decided that this is the third decade of our activity. We had this 20 anniversary tour. We were talking a lot about our past. I played a lot of songs from our past. And there was a lot of songs, you know, full of this melancholy and the sadness and mourning and grief. The, the, the last album was just like epitaph for Piotr Krujinski mostly. So I just had this feeling that maybe we should simply just, just start over and do something. You know, we have our fourth official member. We have the new artwork. Um, we have uh, this new decade. Uh, so let's let's create the album that doesn't sound like the previous ones. I mean, of course, it it still should be Riverside, but I really needed a new approach. And so I thought let's let's make it in more spontaneous way, but also let's let's create this music like you feel self confident, like you, for instance, wake up in the morning and you want to play this album, not like in the evening, you know, when you're sad. No, let's let's make some good morning song, right? The friend of four, for instance. Like just just probably this is one of these albums that you can simply listen during the day or even in the morning, you know, drinking your morning coffee and and have a nice day. So I wanted to change that, and uh, um, after that, I also realized that I can go further with some other ideas like this electronic vibes from 80s in, in friend of four or self-aware probably five years six years ago I, I i if i if i did something i would say no it's i don't know it's too happy right. <laughs> it's too jumpy right. i don't know it's just too shallow yeah. uh, but then i realized when you have this concept on the album and when everything is connected with the struggling um at the end it should be something like you know, taking away, just just letting go, moving on. I believe that software sounds much, much better when you um, listen to the entire album. And at the end, you realize why we are so happy there. Because uh, right. 
the, the, the whole concept is about like, let's be together again. Uh, let's be together and create something, build a community that we lost within the recent years. So I just didn't expect anything else than such a joyful riff like this one. Yeah. I mean, Friend or Foe is a really interesting way to open the record too, because it's maybe the most different sounding song yeah. on on the record. Was that did you think about whether or not to open the album with that with that song or uh, that that it's it's so different or or it just made sense uh, right away um, that the concept was about identity so i really wanted to create the album with the first song that that is a bit controversial and uh, i really wanted to put the lyrics in sort of way like, oh, is it controversial for you, right? Well, so this is not Prague that you were expected, right? <laughs> that kind of narration in, in, in the lyrics, like, oh, wow, sorry, did you, did you expect Second Life Syndrome Part 2 or Escalator Shrine Part 2? No, sorry, this is something else, right? Right. And now, just, just pick your choice. Can you believe me or no? Am I faking or I'm real? You, you, you don't know. I, I like this idea to be, you know, this this part start the album and I when I thought it would be a great idea to, to use that kind of music you know a lot of people probably when they hear this for the first time it's like they're just picking their favorite band from 80s and then maybe they just put okay so this is the mixture of I don't know aha and Riverside or aha or Mr. Mr. and, and Riverside let me tell something you something else. I mean I, the, my first thought and I know that it Maybe some people, I don't want to give too much away about the song, but without people having heard it yet. But my one Durant thought Durant. was, my one thought was, aha, to 100%. Ah, yeah. when I... <laughs> sure. The same people said when we did uh, Addicted, you know, and I, when I'm just listening to this, uh, uh, this track after, uh, after years, I just realized, oh my God, that's really soft. It's like, ah, ah, I'm singing with that kind of voice. But now this one is, uh, I think, uh, maybe because of these keyboards, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, sounds... I don't give people the wrong idea. The song rocks, and it's a good, it's a, it's a good yeah. up rock song. But, but there's a the beginning part of it very much just brought me right there, and I'm, it's, I'm glad you mentioned that band because I, yes, that, it, that was right. It, and it's funny, as well. it's funny because this song is, uh, it was built with uh, many, many elements. I remember that uh, I had. Uh, the first draft for this song I had on, on, on the acoustic guitar. It was just, and I was just singing. It was just like rock ballad, you know, acoustic guitar, let's play, blah, blah, blah. And one day I, I remember that um, I came uh, to the rehearsal room with, uh, with my drum machine and they just started to play that. And I said, um, Meet love to the drummer. You should play on the new album with something like this, you know, maybe 80s vice. Yeah, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, sure. And when I did this, so um, I, I remember that uh, uh, Meet love started to play the, 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 the drums and I also had keyboards and I just played these, uh, this, this song on the guitar, but in a faster way. Right. So, da, 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 da. And suddenly Michal just came up with this dee -dee 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 -dee, and he started to play 80s because he heard like this is 80s and he should have some kind of 80s vibe. And I said, okay, this is weird right now. But on the other hand, it's pretty fun. So maybe, maybe we should do something with that. I still have that on my phone. We, we played that as a joke, uh, you know, six months before. But after that, I realized that's a great joke. <laughs> Let's go with this. <laughs> that's amazing when that happens. I, you know, and I love it that you don't say no, no, we can't do that. Let's and throw it away because it's great. It's, it, it, it ten, works ten so years well. later. I would say that probably no, yeah. no, it's not. We should be serious. We should be, you know, and I, I'm, I'm afraid that we people get used to this very much. And now when they hear, for instance, self-aware or we'll hear a friend of foe, it will be like, oh, uh, OK, it's a, no, 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 no. Thank you. Bye -bye. <laughs> right. But who knows, maybe when they will hear that from the beginning to the end, they will realize that there is a concept behind and that was some purpose for some reason. 
the song that I like a lot uh, on the record is the the long uh, epic song, the A Place Where I Belong. And I love, I mean, you're very angry lyrically on this this track, uh, very sarcastic, very um, direct, like you were saying. Uh, I, where do that? Where does that kind of lyric writing come from? And and did it take you a minute before you were comfortable being so direct writing like that? You know, I didn't have uh, the lyrics when we entered the studio, but I had this concept in my head for many months because I know I knew that uh, lots of things changed and uh, the whole situation with, uh, you know, that we stopped trusting each other, that there is this cancel culture, there is this capitalism and regulation invigilation and the post-truth like people are judging the others reading only headlines without reading the actual content and they're just starting to hate war and other things and uh, all this toxicity toxicity and uncertainty and um, I really wanted to write something that it's different than another midlife crisis story about being lonely somewhere in this world which is unfair and um but i didn't know that i i was so angry and yeah that's true i just probably wanted to be sarcastic i i tried that on on the domini high definition a, a bit i tried that even on second life sooner i remember that we have this uh hyperactive song right it's just another day of my but it was soft, but now, yeah, I, I, I was more, very direct. And I even used the song, I mean, the, uh, the one word that I didn't use on uh, Second Life Syndrome, because I, I used F, only F, but now I use this word right. without the shortcut, <laughs> but for the first time. So that, that, that's something new. It's just like, you know. Yeah. The third decade with the proper word. No, it was, it's great. I mean, it's such a cool song, and I was listening to it, and I and I, I was like, "What? Wow! Okay, cool. He's going. He's like, he's going for it on this this track." I believe I that this great. is the, yeah, this is the key element in terms of uh, writing lyrics, because I, um, it's it has like three parts. The first part talks about us being labeled. It's sort of also about the riverside, like, you know, when we try to do something else, lots of people are confused and then they don't like it. When we did Anna Domini, I mean, when we did Eye of the Soundscape, I still remember some one star reviews on the Prague portals. I uh, probably mentioned that to you, like, it was funny, like, I really like this album, but this is not prog metal. One star. <laughs> and yeah, and this is, this is just like this. You know, yeah. and uh, it's when I when I wrote this first part, like I tried something else, but you put me to the same cage again. Uh, but I also realized that it can be about I don't know domestic violence lyric. You know, like this uh, looking through this to the eyes of the patriarchate and everything. Like you can't do this, you can't do that. Why? And um, so that's that's another that's another um, serious matter. But uh, the second part is just like, okay, uh, the COVID is done, lockdown is done, I'm just going out and what can I see? You know, people are divided, you know, extreme left, extreme right, they're just fighting, they, they're full of anger. And um, I, I, I had to mark that. And uh, at the end, I also, again, started to criticize capitalism and this pressure to be the best, which I realized that it's really toxic because... Um, Life is not a sport all the time. You have to be the best. Um, you know, when we come to the, I don't know, Olympics games, something like that. Um, or I don't know, you great if you are the, the best hacker in the world because you can protect, I don't know, your government from another hackers from, uh, I don't know, different countries, for instance. But um, if you want to be the do you really want to be the best doctor in the world? Do you want to be the really the best, I don't know, psychiatrist in the world? You just need to be as good as you feel you are to help people. And uh, 
And this is the same as with music. Do I really have to record the album to be later uh, on the first place somewhere in the, I don't know, Prog magazine, right? Is, is it really it should be like that? And uh, I, I, I want to record the album that I feel right now that with that kind of music, you know, even if I realize that it won't be great for, I don't know, prog lovers, for instance, just for instance. So at uh, this, uh, and I also marked in this, uh, in this lyrics uh, that uh, that's not true, that everything depends on us and everyone is an architect, architect of, of, of your own life. There's some saying about that. Of course, on some level, yes, but uh, let's be honest, we don't have equal chances, right? Some a rich white American guy and uh, I don't know, poor black girl from Somalia. It's really hard to, you know, be on the same level and start and doing some kind of business, right? Let's say that out loud. And uh, um, yeah, I, I probably started to write something that I should continue on the next album because uh, the subject is really big. Well, it is, yeah. Um, it, listen, it, it's a, it's a terrific, terrific record and one that I think, uh, not a lot of albums that you listen to, uh, start to get better the more you listen to them. And this one did for me, I think that's, that's how I would, I would explain it. Like you like it. And then the three, four, ten listens later, you go, Oh, now I'm getting it. I'm get it. It's this is great. You know, it it's 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 like that kind of record. I believe it's a grower, yeah. And that's it. It's, you start to like it when you when you uh, cross this firewall because everyone has this firewall around our heads, right? And you only like these parts that that belong to your comfort zone. But after 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 some time when you do a second or third chance, probably even after the seeing this live or watching this live, and you're going back to that. Yeah, maybe you think that it's not so bad. <laughs> I I like it because it's I like it because it's positive, even if uh, it says about not happy subjects. And uh, I believe that it's also. This album can be a good inspiration for doing something. I believe in that. Yeah. At least create good community. Uh, and I'm happy that this is not the, the message from the solo artist. It's the message from the band that we proved that with our community, our small community, and with the community with our fans, we achieved something, which well, is good. You know what's interesting about that? Good that you brought that up. Um, Back to the to the cruise for a minute. When we did uh, this interview, I, I spoke to to you guys in front of a, a, a standing group of people, and you know th they got to ask you questions, yeah. you know that kind of thing. And um, everybody that was there that was a fan, there was a, like a good amount of people there too, uh, that were asking you questions. They were so like in love with the music that you guys make, and it they all had stories about how it really meant a lot to them and helped them through times like this or that. And, and some people got emotional over it. You seemed shocked by that a little bit, that, that it could mean that much to people. Is it, do you, what were you, was that, was that, is that in, weird for you to see that when, cause a lot of times you don't get that, right? You're seeing them at a show. The audience is at a show and it's, clapping and cheering and dancing or whatever but having this kind of cl close interaction with people talking to you like that is that weird for you maybe not weird but sometimes i feel that i i received too much <laughs> because I, I i didn't deserve i don't know but I, i'm happy that i can you know help someone with with my music with our music it's always a great feeling to see people happy and um, if someone says that this or that album helped him to recover, uh, for me, this is a great compliment, much, much better than some top notch somewhere in this Pitchfork magazine, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't care about this. 
I care. And uh, it, it's when I see uh, during the cruise to the edge, I had lots of fans that they just came to me and they were just like with tears in their eyes, like, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I get some letters also that I, I had a chance to, to read uh, in my, you know, this small room floating. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was really, really, really emotional and touching. So yeah, that, that, that's a great thing. Someone asked me why Riverside has people on the covers all the time. Uh, because uh, each cover of Riverside, there's a, there's a person or fragments of the person that yeah, I always wanted to write a lyric about us, about how we feel. I never wanted to write some weird stories about, I don't know, serial killers or some Lord of the Rings things. But that kind of stuff, you know, was really emotional. Maybe the lyric part also is important that helps to many people, people in Riverside, which is which is great. relate to it, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, you co you're coming on tour. You have... Um... America dates, uh, North America dates announced coming soon, uh, beginning yes. of beginning of next year, and then some European dates. Is, is most of next year going to be touring, pretty much? Pretty much, yeah. I think uh, that uh, it won't be too cold uh, <clears throat> because we're starting in February. But yeah, it's going to be a, a great tour, and I'm very really happy. Uh, we did that 10 years ago with Shrine of New Generation Slaves. Like we released the album in January and after that we, we, we went on tour and we had a chance to, to play a lot of shows. And this time, I believe we will also do that to reach these places that we, that we missed within the last years from obvious reasons. So yeah, we're really looking forward to, to hang out with our you know, audience. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely going to come uh, check out a show. You guys are coming down to Florida, so that's going to be exciting. Good, always good to see you guys again. One of the best bands in the world. Absolutely. Great great album. Uh, always fun talking to you, man. Um, Thank you. It's great. Uh, so ID Entity uh, comes out January 20th. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a new single out soon. And check out uh, Riverside.com uh, or your socials or, or wherever for tour dates and, and all of that. And uh, good luck to you for, uh, on the record, man. Good luck on tour, uh, everything you have going on. And uh, we'll see you around soon. Definitely. Thank you so much for this interview. And everybody, thank you very much for your support. Bye-bye. All right, man. Talk to you later. Bye.